Now that's a decent break, and I didn't even use full power. What's going on everybody? Lil Chris here and in today's video, I have a very simple exercise that will help you improve your breaks. This is something that will certainly benefit any beginning pool player, but it can also certainly help any player if you're struggling with your breaks. So let's get started. Now, one of the most common mistakes I see pool players do with their breaks is their overuse of power with extra body movement. They might try to follow through so far that they end up letting go with their cues so they can thrust their hand forward. They might try standing up while they're breaking, or as they're going forward, they will end up kicking their leg up. All things which actually do add a little bit more power, but none of that extra power means anything if you end up doing something like this. Not very powerful now, is it? Now, I've actually had a couple of APA teammates that struggle with their breaks. And the best advice that I was able to give them is to break like they're shooting a normal shot. Because when they're normally shooting, they're not concerned with any of that extra body movement. They will just get down on the cue ball, pull their cue back normally, and follow through normally, and sometimes give the cue ball a good clean hit. Now, having said all that though, if I were to ask you, what is the most controlled thing that you do on the table during a match? The most common answer that I've gotten from that question is the stop shot, which really isn't the answer that I'm looking for because there's some variables in the stop shot that make it more complex than what I was thinking. Like how low you're gonna hit on the cue ball and how far away is the object ball because that's gonna determine how hard you're gonna hit the cue ball. The answer that I'm looking for in that question is, the lag, when you're lagging to determine who's going to break first. That is the most controllable thing that you do on the table, in my opinion, because all you're trying to do is send the ball straight into the foot rail and have it come as close to the head rail as possible, which looks something like this. Now that's actually a pretty good lag. Now I'm certainly not suggesting that you break using the same speed as you do your lag, but as a baseline, I'm gonna go ahead and try to break this rack and use the same speed that I did when I lagged. And to clock the speed, I'll be using the Predator Break Speed app. And so as you can see, I don't even get a legal break because I don't think four balls hit a rail. And the break ends up being only 5.84 miles per hour. Now we actually get to the portion of the exercise because all I want you to do is lag again, but instead of getting the cue ball to come as close to the head rail as possible, I want your cue ball to go one, two, at least three rails. But while the cue ball is trying to go at least three rails, you also have to focus on trying to keep the cue ball in as straight of a line as possible so that way you have the most amount of control. That should hopefully look something like this. And then when you're able to repeatedly do that, go ahead and try to break a rack and see what kind of results you get. So once again, using the Predator Break Speed app, let's see what this clock's at. Now we got a decent spread. We almost made a ball. And just from doing that, I was able to get up to 11.8 miles per hour. Now I'm pretty sure you can see the point of the exercise, 
but hopefully you can see some of the benefits as well. Especially if you're at your local pool hall and you don't want to spend dollar after dollar to get the balls out and break rack after rack after rack. Well, you can just take the cue ball out and shoot it up and down the table because you'll have a visual representation of how hard you're hitting that cue ball based on how far it's going to roll. But that's not going to excuse you from having to break rack after rack after rack. You're still going to have to put those reps in as you continuously improve your breaks. But as far as dialing in how much power you're going to have on the break, you can just use the cue ball. Now, for this final break, I'm going to try to send my cue ball five rails. And then using that amount of power, I want to see what kind of result I can get on the break. Now, I actually didn't get five rails. It was more like four and three quarters, but that's still actually pretty good. And I hope you also noticed how my cue ball didn't travel exactly in a straight line, because this is something all of us as pool players are going to suffer from, because as we add more power to our break or any type of shot, we start to become less and less accurate. So you're gonna have to find your limit to know how hard can you actually break with as much control as possible. Now, with that amount of power, and I will try to add a little bit more, let's see what kind of results I can get on the break. Well, I ended up breaking dry. And just using my arm, I was able to get up to 15.18 miles per hour. And this is actually a pretty decent spread. I just wish I would have made a ball. So if I wanted to try to add more power, I can still put in the reps of trying to use just my arm, or I can try to throw in another muscle, kick my leg, or do whatever I got to do. But as I said, the more power I start to add to my break, the less accurate and the less control that I'm going to have on my cue ball. And I want to try to have as much control and as much power as I can possibly have on my break to have the possibility to be able to break and run a rack. And that's going to do it for today's video. Now, I hope everybody can benefit from this type of exercise because I personally know how boring and monotonous it can be racking and breaking rack after rack after rack, especially if you're by yourself like I am here in my garage. But this is actually something I personally don't mind doing because that's what I do is rack and break, rack and break over and over again, just like how I had to do in order to make this video. Because no matter how much power I want to put into my break, I always want to see what type of spread result I'm going to get. But for anybody else that might not want to put themselves through this kind of torture in order to improve their breaks, then hopefully you can at least dial the amount of power in by using just the cue ball. But as I said, that is not going to excuse you from still having to actually rack and break at some point in time, but hopefully you at least have a partner with you that can help you do that. So I hope everybody was able to enjoy it can actually use this exercise. If you like what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and then be sure to click the bell notification icon to be notified whenever I go live or publish a new video. Take care, everybody.